Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Monday, December 20th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a time for change call this Wednesday night. We won't have a reverse aging health call because it's Christmas Eve on Friday. But we will continue with Global Guided Meditation calls every day. We're approaching a absolute phenomenal transition for this planet and the civilization. Unprecedented. And I guess you could call it a step into the enlightened beginning of this world. And there's going to be a lot of shifting and changing. And I'm not saying negative at all. I'm saying very uplifting and positive. Whatever man does to the web, he does to himself. Black Elk Ogala Sioux. We know since 2012 and all the hoopla about spiritual circles and seekers of truth around the world have been talking about the possible apocalypse and wondering if the end of the world is coming. Countless movies, TV, media have been depicted at a time when the entire existence of human beings would come to one final end. There has been extensive talk about the Mayan calendar depicting the great change of humanity starting back in 2012 uh, when everything changes dramatically. And there are times of great mystery and profound change. And it's good to know that every ending in this life is always the beginning of something even better than even ever before. So the message to us is do not be afraid. We are going to experience the greatest transformation of our lives. I would, I would say of any of our lives, and many past lives. And then massive changes can be hard to digest for some of us. Yet we need it. Our society is craving for the greatest opportunity ever given to humankind to transform ourselves. Get ready to enter the most revolutionary and enlightening time this planet has ever seen in its existence. This human resonance, which many of us know or know about, which measures the vibration of the entire planet, has been, which not a lot of people talk about, but it has been increasing exponentially. Scientists have proven that the magnetic vibratory rate of our planet has been escalating. The magnetic solar storms from our sun have been increasing, causing us to physically enter a much higher frequency of energy and accelerating every aspect of our experience of this life in the most intimate ways. Every day, all of our DNA is having to operate at a faster frequency. It is time, it is a time for humanity to raise its consciousness and dive deeper into our spiritual path. We are here, all of us, to explore our divine nature and all the horror and catastrophe in the world is forcing us to find solace at a deeper space within. We are here to learn how to become truly free from our own suffering. We are here to get grounded in our connection to the God source and discover the infinite spiritual power within each and every one of us. When we stop all of our mind chatter and focus on love, the heart, the soul, and feel the truth within, we realize that we are this divine love itself. We can then open our hearts to a feeling that is deeply eternal loving and totally let go of all fear, judgment, and poverty. Discovering this love within is the beginning of humanity moving from 3D 
to 4D consciousness and to 5D, from the third chakra to the fourth, from the third wheel to the fourth wheel, to the fifth wheel. This shift is the transformation. We are not here to only imagine change like life's, life is some fairyland fantasy. This is about real life. And what we want is deep, true, measurable, and emotional. The transformation that each of us desires is something we can feel, see, and know in our hearts. We want our lives bubbling up with so much joy that we cannot escape from the appreciation vibration and thoughts of gratitude fill our consciousness each and every day. If there is a change on this earth, this earth's magnetism, there is a change on the consciousness and also on an adaptation of the physical level for this new vibration. The changes are not only on our planet, but also affect the whole universe. And today's science can verify that. Avatar Sai Baba on 2012. We are not separate beings interacting with this planet from disconnection on any level. All, all 8 billion people who live here are abiding in one sea of consciousness together, impacting each other and our planet every day in the most intimate ways. We can see it by looking at the most successful corporations, which are now the green ones, who have the most environmentally conscious ethics and environment, environmentalists working for them. The planet has swung from trashing this world of personal gain to seeing that real success comes through working together as one and making it green again. Every global disaster that manifests on our planet's way of communicating, it is our planet's way of communicating to the to the people. She has been saying, stop what you're doing to me and pay attention. The earth has been deeply disturbed by greedy, selfish, and materialistic ways for far too long. She wants us to wake up and live as spiritual beings in human bodies. This earth is wanting a dramatic change and is rebelling at how we've been raping her forests siphoning out her tectonic lubricants, crude oil, trashing her oceans, burying garbage in her fields, and polluting her atmosphere. She cannot take this abuse anymore. And a new clean green technology must be implemented ASAP, which it is. The crazy thing is that we, are all, we already have the technology to save this planet. It's good to educate ourselves and everyone we know about this we already have many new high-tech inventions and alternative energy devices that can be put into production now we can create hundred percent free green energy there are even we just to give you an idea we have obviously electric cars but we have anti-gravitic vehicles too and we also have the ones that you're familiar with that run on hundred percent water And just, you could just go on Google and, and, and Google alternative energy devices and see what's, what's coming up. There's all kinds of hidden articles on the Internet that you can find that have truth to them. Then there's those that don't. There's more out there than most of us know about. Europe is always light years ahead of USA as far as implementing the newest alternative energy sources to run their cars, homes, and factories that are clean and green. With the power of the Internet, we can communicate and brainstorm together as one world to implement this amazing new green technology that can even shift our generation from eating, drinking, and breathing pollution. Our planet has already gone far beyond her threshold point and will only continue 
to pollute our bodies and minds until we have stopped all violent acts upon it. This is the secret to creating a new economy that thrives instead of barely survives. By utilizing sustainable, environmentally free, high-tech resources, we can discover how the sun, wind, water, and the geothermal energy can provide all of our electricity needs for everyone for thousands of years absolutely free. We can choose to step into being the conscious, evolved beings we truly are. And when those in power of these choices become enlightened enough to reciprocate this gratitude and respect back to the earth, they will be rewarded profoundly. The more we all jump on the environmentally green train, we all and we will all experience a new world that responds back to us with even more abundance of resources and enjoyment of life. We know that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, Sir Isaac Newton. The main purpose of our souls requested to sign or commit or agree uh, for this Armageddon experience was to cause a rapid and profound evolution in our consciousness. There are truly no coincidences or accidents in this world or this entire universe. There is no action or reaction without a deeper unconscious motive behind it. Individually and as a whole, we are being redirected deeper inside ourselves to shed light on those unconscious decisions we've been making for years that result in only more struggle and suffering. We are all here to discover something cosmic, indescribable, and completely enlightening within ourselves. We may want to know that from now until the end of our lives, that we are each like hard kernels of popcorn sitting in a hot oil cooker. As things heat up, those who let go of their tight control about things will suddenly pop into a light, expansive state. If you can let go of all your fears that arise and find your spiritual nature, you will, through a massive state of expansion, wake up from the unconscious dream. This is the greatest spiritual opportunity any of us will ever come across. So don't abandon ship now. We are going to be given the chance to become <clears throat> excuse me, a fully self-realized enlightened being. Self-realized, fully enlightened being. Perhaps the most important thing of all is to be grateful for this time, this very now, as it truly is a great cleansing that we all need. We are going to be forced to burn through centuries of old, dilapidated belief systems that no longer worked and respect ourselves, each other, and this planet in the most sacred ways. Almost everyone has been deeply asleep operating out of these old ways. It is the old earth. In order to become totally conscious, empowered beings, we needed something big to make a truly deep transformation throughout our world and within ourselves. So this end of times is truly a positive thing. It is an end to our old ways of believing we are separate, unconscious, greedy, and selfish beings who are habitually concerned with acquiring more money, status, and power. Just the mere idea that an end is coming causes most people to become more sensitive, loving, conscious, and awake. So yes, thank God that we are forced to end this toxic and insane pollution that we witness a major global conscious shift. And that, that, that end began in 2012. Human beings began working more for, for each other and the unity of peace and harmony. Believe it or not, this was the beginning, and we will see all wars from this point are coming to an end. 
the momentum towards higher consciousness and inner peace is going to be such a magnetic force that everyone on this earth is not going to want to miss it. Even the governments and the biggest corporations realize this as they are finding they actually generate more income and happier employees when they go 100% green. What the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly, Richard Bach. People have asked me, what can I do to help? Perhaps the greatest thing you can do is inform as many people as you can through your social media platforms about this shift. Let people know what is available and possible. In this process, people will need to learn how to find a deeply rooted source of peaceful stillness with all the mass change that is going to happen. We will need specific guidance on how to remain in a lighter state of consciousness, be at peace with all the changes, and find our sweet spiritual nature. What's amazing is that every thought moving through our minds is crystal clear, and our hearts open to feeling that we can only the feeling that we can only describe as perfect peace and bliss. How we relate to others becomes dramatically positive and reigniting a deep, profound connection with our relationships, work, and love life and spiritual path again. Never believing that we had the willpower to do it for the long, for this long. Yet after four days, five days, a week, a month, a year, you will feel so much energy, consciousness, and enthusiasm for this life that you won't be able to stop doing it. It works like a supercharge of enlightenment. Something else that you might want to try that works to increase our consciousness is practice giving and receiving warm-hearted, honest compliments in all your relationships. Give love, not to get love back, but because you are so full of creative love that it just pours out of you. If you need to heal some broken parts before you feel capable of loving someone else, there are many ways to do that, and that is to surrender, let go. The consciousness in you and the consciousness in me, apparently two, really one, seek unity, and that is love, as a Gadada. You want to get out there and initiate a positive change in the physical environment around you. You don't have to go very far. As a consumer, what you purchase at the stores and malls is the loudest statement you are making of them all. Whatever you spend your money on is what you are voting for more of in life, in this life. If you keep buying petrol and gasoline cars, they will keep drilling for fuel to fill them up. What you're choosing for your planet is where you spend your money every day. If you can bike, walk, or ride with someone who has an electric car, you are making a difference. When you decide that your family will only consume alternative green forms of reusable new world energy, you are truly creating a clean green planet. When the mass majority of people are conscious enough to change how we are impacting the planet, we will all get to enjoy the benefits of living in a safe, environmentally peaceful world, the new earth. Each person is a strand in the weave of this life. And without you, this planet would not be complete. When every human being understands that they cannot hurt another person without harming themselves, when they truly understand this, when every human being understands that they cannot hurt another person without harming themselves, they will also see how they cannot pollute the environment without also polluting themselves. When all our friends and family see that we are actually saving money, helping the environment, and are a happier person because of it, they'll jump on the bandwagon as well. 
What we see on the news these days, if you're still watching the news, and even on the Internet, it may not look like humans are evolving in consciousness. Yet the media only covers, as we all know, maybe 3% of what is actually happening all around the planet. The real truth is that there is a massive, naturally occurring grassroots movement where there are more alternative green conscious companies sprouting every day more than any other type in history. But you don't see that. If the only prayer you said in your whole life was thank you, that would suffice, Meister Eckert. All of us are powerful, conscious, manifesting beings who fell asleep on the path to enlightenment. It's not a negative. We've forgotten the fact that we are spiritual beings connected to an unlimited source of power. We must choose to remember that we are spiritual beings who came here to transcend all suffering by mastering our minds in this physical human body. Once everyone becomes conscious enough and can stop choosing harmful, destructive thoughts on a grand scale, we will see our planet move into a state of peace and harmony with us. This planet is trying to wake us up. And when we are awake, it will stop shaking us. Whether you know this or not, our souls did ask to be awakened in this lifetime to experience our real, unbounded, infinite, godlike energy inside. In this lifetime, the depth of our unconsciousness is so deep in each of us that we needed something this piercing and horrific on a global scale to force enlightenment onto the whole and thus drag each individual towards awakening. How could we have set it up any better way? As we watch the world shift into 100% green, we will find it easier to feel peace within our beings and in harmony with this planet, Earth Gaia Arya. The more gentle and loving we are with ourselves, the more this gentle healing vibration must manifest physically into our world. In order for us to create a more conscious, awake, and empowered world, we each must choose to become more sensitive. This means stop using toxic substances that numb you, make you more anxious, or cause you to check out. By wanting a heightened sensitivity, it allows us to heal our old wounds and feel amazingly powerful. We can tap into the subtle realm of our spiritual nature where we realize nobody is separate from the whole. Man did not create the web of life. He is but a strand in it, in the Chief Seattle. When we sit and meditate on the feeling that everybody on this planet is becoming a more conscious, sensitive, and enlightened being, we are helping manifest this faster for the whole. It takes a very evolved consciousness to understand the inherent sacredness of life on this planet. When this happens on a grand scale, everyone will have such a deep love and connection inside that they could not imagine even harming each other or the earth. So if you will, go to the place where you won't be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies. Head to toe, inside and out. When you're stressed, frustrated, fearful, the body is nowhere near relaxed. In the way we maneuver this planet, in enlightenment, 
is to have the body relax. It's the first step. So it's surrendering. It's not quitting. A lot of people believe that when they surrender, they're quitting or they're giving up. It is not the case. When you surrender, the body responds and relaxes. And the surrendering is basically asking yourself, any of the things that you are in this very moment carrying with you, and only you know what those are, is either to forgive and surrender those things where they are finally gone forever. You do no longer, you don't carry them, you don't drag them, which affects everything about us. So it's a surrender. Surrender your fears, anxieties, worries, stresses, anything that you feel you're weak. None of us are weak. We never have been, we never will be. So by relaxing the body, how do you really tell if the body is getting relaxed or is relaxed naturally? It gets lighter. You feel lighter. You feel lighter. You begin to realize is that, okay, so in order to relax the body, you focus on the breath because the breath is what calms the body. You know, how many times have uh, you said to yourself, take a deep breath, calm down, relax? But it's always take a deep breath. Breathe easily and slowly. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And as we breathe easily and slowly, the body relaxes. We relax. We let go of garbage that we carry. Crap. And we feel good when we do this. And we didn't give up. We didn't quit. We just surrendered things that we no longer wish to carry with us, which gives us much more lightness and buoyancy, so to speak, where we continue moving forward. And the breath is sacred. Our breath, the breath that we have, that sustains these bodies, that the soul gives the body power to do so, so that we can experience these physical lives. Joy and happiness and bliss rather than pain and suffering. And it's all the time we choose. Do we choose to have a very stressed out body? Why? Some people do. It's not a negative. But some people do. They just, just you know, they're always stressed. They're always tense. They're always stressing. How many times have you said, I'm just going to just do nothing? Right? You say, I'm just going to do nothing. And the intent's there. But it doesn't take you long where you start feeling guilty because you're not doing anything. And the whole time you're not doing anything, you're focusing on your breath. Then, therefore, you won't be worried or feeling guilty because that won't be there, because the ego mind won't be there, because you have transcended the ego mind by focusing on the breath, which moves you into the now. And when you're in the now, all that stuff is not there. All the mind chatter that we all have 24-7 is gone. Because you're no longer participating in the mind or the ego or the subconscious mind. You're only focused on the breath, which puts us all, always puts us in the now. Everything happens in the now past, present, now, future. We create the future in the now. And and we understand that the now is all there is. But so many are uncomfortable with just being in the now. Because they want to shoot into the future and find out what their future is going to be like. Or reminisce in the past. Now, some of us, we all have memories, right? So we all experience them and we all enjoy them. And we review them in our private libraries and our subconscious mind. And we enjoy these things. But we don't stay with them. It's the same with our future. We all wander off in the future. 
wondering this, wondering that, why this isn't happening, why that's not happening. When am I going to have this? When am I going to have that? When's this going to happen? And when we understand that we are not the, the, the body, none of us are the body. We never have been, never will be, ever be on it for. It's a physical form that we can inhabit to experience physical life. That's what it is. And we give it the power. You know, we give it the power so that it could sustain the, the, the soul, so it could carry the soul around. We also understand, and we will, as a whole, as a one, slowly but surely discover that when we look in these bodies, we see these seven lights from the tailbone to the top of the head. And they're beautiful colors, seven different colors. Colors very deep and vibrant. Nothing on this, like on this planet. And they're known as chakras. And chakra, the definition of chakra is wheel. So these are wheels of light. They're spiritual, etherical energy. We, the gods that we are, are spiritual, etherical energy. We flow through these wheels of light. So you know how that is, how intimate we know these bodies as the gods that we are. Head to toe inside now, down to the quantum core, blood flow, cells, everything, all the organs. We are experts as the gods that we are of these bodies. Once the journey within leads each of us to the God that we are, we will begin to realize that we will be able to heal these bodies at a blink of the eye. Period. We are the power of healing. There is no argument with that. None whatsoever. Now, some of us, we, we, we have a choice. We always have choices. And you look in front of you and you've got three pads, golden pads, right? And they're standing in front of these paths. And the paths are, are canopied by trees that are all golden, shimmering, the bark, the leaves, the branches, everything. And then the path is a beautiful emerald green kind of a grass, and you look, you're standing in the center one, on, on the beginning of the path to the center, and it looks almost brand new. And the one on the left, which is the past, looks really used. And the one on the right, which is the future, looks really used. And the reason that is, is that most of us do not stay in the now. We're constantly wandering at the mastering, the master, the master, ego mind, leading and guiding us around, always jumping into a future that doesn't exist, living in the past that is dead and gone. We ignore the, we ignore the now. This is why so many of us suffer and go through dis dissatisfaction, frustration, fear, because we're not in the now. And we haven't stilled the ego mind. Some of us will stay in the past so long that we'll bring it. We'll, we'll, we'll drag it with us into a future that doesn't exist. And we'll create that future from that past. And we will relive that past and that future. A lot of people will say to themselves, no matter what we do, we always end up here. We all go in the past. We all go in the future. But a lot will stay in the past, and some will just live the future that doesn't exist. Can you imagine that? Imagine the suffering, disappointment, and anxiety that's developed doing that. When all along, right under our noses, is the now. And we practice staying in the now by always focusing on our breath. But we have tens of millions of thoughts, clouds passing through like, like in the sky, clouds in the sky, passing through, passing by, and they're not ours. 
tens of millions of program thoughts. They aren't ours. And, but we think they are because they're so tricky through the ego mind. Remember, when you have thoughts that come in, they are not yours. But when you have thoughts that you send out, you can do it right now. You can literally generate a thought knowing that it's your thought that you've sent to the universe. When it goes out, when you send out, it is your thought. When it comes in, it is not your thought, but it sure seems like it. It's real, real slick and tricky. But when you begin to start acknowledging, that's not my thought. It's gone. It just literally vaporizes. Or when you start to realize that's the ego. That is not me. And it vanishes. And, and, and that's the ego mind will keep, you know, they'll send those, send those thoughts into you over and over and over again. When you start to realize that giving is receiving and receiving is giving, they're one. So it's especially important to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves and in deep gratitude 24-7 with ourselves so that when we do float off, because we do, we're focused on something in the now, and we float off on these thoughts that aren't ours. And so when that happens, the wonderful thing is that we're consciously aware that it happens, and we say to ourselves, not a biggie. I'll focus on my breath, and I'll be in the now. You can't project in the now. You only live in the now. You can't project out five years from now. Why would you? Does that make sense? More pain and suffering? Expectations, attachments? But in the now, it's only the moment. You can see the difference. And by staying in the now, you step into enlightenment. It starts flooding in. The longer you maintain being in the now, the more you will step into enlightenment. Now, we all know that the soul that we are, the true God, the God source, the kingdom of God, the heaven, is in these bodies. So we are not these bodies. We are not the character. We are not the personality. We are not our status. We are not, and none of that. We are the God within the body. And that understanding is imperative as we progress and transcend into new earth. We will need that. And it's our natural state of being. We also know that we are heaven on earth. Soul is heaven, body is earth, consciously aware. There's a lot of us that are unconscious, unconsciously aware. We are consciously aware to the point where we know we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. So heaven isn't a place. Heaven is the God that you are. And we literally, every step we take on this planet, we are creating paradise. Not only that, we're shining our light 360 degrees, continuously, infinity. Try it. Blast everybody. They don't, they don't have to know them. Genuinely, from the heart and mind, blast them with the deep eternal love that you are, that the God that you are. And you don't have any expectations or attachments to that. You do it because it's your natural state of being. And it'll transform everything around you. In you, above you, below you, beneath you. And it will change everyone around you. So you picture this planet. Take a starship out. View this planet. You'll see it glows. 
And you'll also notice that all the lights around it in this universe are like dim lit candles in dark rooms. They, they barely, they, 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 you, there's no comparison. A God planet paradise that glows. This is the new earth. This is where we're going. This is what we've stepped into. The old pathways are gone. There's no turning back. There will be those that will have difficulty because they want to hold on to the lower dank frequencies. They will have difficulty adjusting. They will need help. And we will be there to assist them. There will be others that are so low in dark matter, survival matter frequency that they will vanish. They will perish. They cannot sustain their form. The frequencies are too high for them to exist in high frequencies because they're so low. Now, we do know also, being consciously aware, that there are parts of us, of the gods that we are in these bodies, that are asleep. They don't hear us. They're part of us, but they're totally asleep. They will wake when they are ready to waken. Or they will be blasted to the point where they are shaken awake with deep eternal love, higher vibrational frequencies. This is happening right now on this planet. So we're, we communicate with the parts of ourselves, the gods that are consciously aware, which is all light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetype, the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yawa, Yeshua. This is all the off-worlders, celestials, galactics, all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited. All of the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath the earth, and the garden. And all of them are parts of the gods that we are. Gods within them are the gods within us, vice versa. It's always been that way. Remember, the only illusion is separation. Now, the archangels, they vibrate at a different frequency than we do in their physical form. So therefore, we don't see them like we see each other. They, you could you could just be walking by a crowd of people, and and it's a complete stranger who makes a really wonderful comment to you. And at first you think, and you go, "Wow, how often does that happen?" That was an angel. Or you need some help, and you say, "Boy, it'd be nice if I had some help with this." And something someone appears and helps you. That was an angel. Or you have a conversation, random, complete stranger, and you just start communicating like it's old home week, right? You're talking about something, and then it, it, it doesn't dawn on you during. It usually comes in after uh, the interaction with that angel, and you say, that was an angel. And then you feel light. You feel like a, a warmth. Uh, in the center of your chest. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of millions, tens of thousands. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can house a large number in a small area. And if you want them to, just ask. They will, and you will be in bliss. And they have a message they, that they deliver to us in many, many, many different ways, shapes, forms. Some of us 
understand the message. Others are still not quite sure. And the message is, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? And it is. We've gotten so seduced in the physical life, material life, that we've forgotten how absolutely magnificent it is to be in these bodies because we can eat, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch and feel, we can laugh, we can cry, we can breathe, we can see. All of these things as the gods that we are, we don't do. Imagine that. We're pure, deep, eternal love. We are balls of highly omnipotent, powerful beings. But we don't do all the things that we do in these physical forms. That's why these bodies are so seductive and so enticing for us gods. Because we go into them and we are able to experience an unending array of physical interactions. Do you think you remember what a smile is when you leave the body after a very short period of time? You, know, you don't know what it is. Or laughter. So once you recognize that, because you will as you continue with the journey within, you'll always be in gratitude. Always. Without even having to force it, you will always be in gratitude. Deep eternal gratitude for having the opportunity as the God that you are to be housed in that physical body exactly as it is in this very moment. Now the off-worlders, galactics and celestials, we're only familiar with a very small group of them. Over a thousand species travel through the solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universe is every day. Now, the group that we're familiar with are the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Zeta Reticuli, the Feline, the Syrians, the Anunnaki, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, the Avian. Now, this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, and ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. All the light energy beings that are in this, with this planet, shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations, which we don't see, because of the eyes we have with these bodies, we only see 1% of what is. We don't see them in the ultraviolet light spectrum or the infrared light spectrum or the other variants, but they're there. But there is a small group that we are familiar with. In some parts of that group, we have a day-to-day -day interaction. Those are the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, and the unicorn. Now we know, it's pretty common sense for us all, that if these bodies don't have air, we can't stay in them. There's a goddess that we are. If they don't have water, we can't stay in them. The elementals, the magics, are very important for these bodies to be able to sustain so we can continue to experience physical life. Now, the ascended masters, they have mastered, they have ascended into physical and mastered physical form. They have ascended out of uh, physical. They hold pure consciousness, God form. The God is pure consciousness. We, all of us, the gods that we are, are pure consciousness. 
we entered these bodies in this lifetime finally to discover really and truly who and what we really are in these bodies, that we are not the bodies. And understand, this gathering is from the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googaplexes from trillions of universes. We are connected, always part of all the gods and all existence and all that there is, ever has been, ever beyond and forever. It doesn't matter if we're, you know, it looks or it feels like we're a billion light years apart. We're not. Now, we have ascended into physical form. We are mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. And along the way, we may discover that we are the light. So when we do decide to leave these bodies, we will know we're the light. We will know that we will no longer fall for the trick to follow the light. When you really get down to it and you see it for what it is, it is trickery. It is matrix. Do you remember when you leave the body and a light comes after you? You are the light. Don't go into that light because the whole process starts over again incessant incarnation with no memory reincarnate 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 with no memory you know, I don't think any of us choose to do that we've just been tricked into it and we're all gathered arm in arm hand in hand so to speak and all that there is and all existence and beyond all one Some of us consciously aware, others just asleep. In full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. And we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now. This light emanates from the God source, the kingdom of God the God, the heaven, each and every one of us inside these bodies. It is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest. Eternal love, gratitude, peace. It is flooding this planet. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Infinity, so. we begin to ascend above the planet. As we do, we're met with this massive ocean of glitter. It is everywhere. We are in it. And the best way to describe what we're viewing is a massive grand finale fireworks show along with a massive laser light show along with a ballroom ball, the globe in the ballroom, slowly turning, reflecting all the wonderful colors except the one that we're viewing right now is a trillion times larger and a trillion times more intense. And you combine all that, it's absolutely spectacular. And we're curious, so we go to the reflective points, and we notice these little tiny microscopic perfectly etched mirrors, and we enter them. And we discover that all of us, in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, are teaching and learning from each other, with each other. We're either students or teachers, teachers or students or both. We're never none. 
it doesn't matter how life is housed, how the God is housed. What's interesting is that we learn from every single aspect of life. We're learning from other parts of ourselves, the gods that we are. You can watch a squirrel and learn. You see a bird fly and learn. You choose to, as long as you're not too seduced into the physical material world. Where everything is out there and not in here. But when you discover everything is within, then you'll look at life a lot differently. The tree is not the life. The God within the tree is the life. The dog is not the life. The God within the dog is the life. And the the God is experiencing physical existence. All of us are learning. That's what's so magnificent. We always will be learning. We were immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we all are the power of healing. We were then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We were then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created that from head to toe, remind us all, from head to toe inside and out, we are imbued with a white fire armor that is impenetrable. We have been since infinity. It emanates from the God force, love, light, energy within each and every one of us, the gods that we are, the pure love, gratitude, and peace that we are, that we're of and from. It is of the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. So all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, demons, any possessions, attachments, cannot sustain themselves. They cannot be. So we're protected infinity. Always. But... Only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, greed, fear, hurry, envy, revenge, dishonesty, manipulation, insincerity, You will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then you have all kinds of opportunities and attachments, possessions, and many other things with the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. First part of this column is the purple transmuting flame. We created this column to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. And the other part of this column of light is the violet ray. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony, the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest eternal love, gratitude, peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column of light that we created to remind us all the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the sun, the sunlight, the sun sets and the sun rises, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the sky, the clouds, 
the trees, the forest, the soil, the mountains, the animals, the rainbows. We are everything. Everything is us. So the next time you're viewing a sunset or a sunrise, an ocean front, a mountain view, a snowfall, a starry lit night sky, it is you. Always has been. Always will be. Ever beyond and forever. It is the God that you are. And when you see it, you say to yourself, that is the God that I am. Watch the feeling through your heart mind. Understand it. There's no guilt. There's no weird feeling. It's a natural state of being. It is an understanding. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above them if we're carrying physical form. The reason we do this is because we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. Now, in the column itself, we see an oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, we see a golden white ball of light. Surrounding the golden ball of white light are numerous multicolored rings of light. They almost seem like they're infinity. They just keep going and going. This whole assembly has created a massive, super bright white sparkling electric cloud mist and it's absorbed within our heart center our heart mind and it is like a warm embrace that never ends the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high the deepest of the deepest deepest and the purest of the purest purest eternal love then comes gratitude peace gentleness kindness generosity humbleness well-being, tranquility, benevolence, great prosperity, great abundance. It's never-ending. And we discovered that it has always been the reflection of the gods that we all are. We look at the top of this tower, and we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees infinity. It's doing right now, flooding all of us, bathing all of us, saturating all of us, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, and this planet. This is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love. We are all drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere going on almost four years ago. It holds over 1,700 of our meditations in perpetual motion. And these, these meditations don't wane, dissipate, vanish. They intensify and they expand. All that intent, hundreds of millions on and off world, throughout existence, those of us consciously aware, focused on the complete liberation of this planet Earth guy are in this now head to toe, inside now. In this very now. And you can tap into them. Patience and courage are key elements to meditating. They're also a byproduct of meditation. Become a meditation master. If you've been sitting for 48 minutes every day and still can't stay focused for more than five seconds, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Breathe. Practice compassion with yourself today by having patience with you. Let go of any need to get it perfect and yet keep bringing your mind back to this moment. The more you can discipline your mind, the easier your life will become. Discipline leads to freedom. 
And this is our opportunity to be radically and outrageously free. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly for today. Devote the next 24 hours to being gentle with you in every possible way. Practice extreme gentleness with yourself. Being gentle with you means that every time you think a harsh negative thought about you or a self-doubt, fear, or disbelief in yourself, that you tell yourself something kind in its place. You could say it's okay. You are loved or something soothing. However you go about moving through this day, move slowly, gently inside and on the outside. This is the greatest energetic way of saying you love you and forgive yourself for all the times you were hard on you. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, following morning. We will return here Tuesday. December 21, 21, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call.